One of the weirdest things about being Puppycat are the Wish Crystals, and further confusing exactly how they operate is the way that the show developed, with the way they seem to work changing from one version of the series to the next. So today, we're going to talk about the Wish Crystals, how they might come from shooting stars, and what they've done to the various characters in the show. My name is Deep Cut, hit that subscribe button because I have a lot more BN Puppycat theories coming your way soon. The Wish Crystals exist in the world of Bee and Puppycat as little edible shards that can make people's wishes come true all over the universe, though their powers are limited. The Wish Crystals first appeared in the finale of the original YouTube series, with Bee discovering them with Deckard at a temp job on the Donut Planet. Mooley makes donuts with these crystals and sends them through the Black Wish Hole for other people to eat and make wishes on. Seeing this, B would put one in her bag to give to Cardamon when she returned to Earth, with a note saying that it would grant the wish of whoever ate it. Giving a piece to his dog Sticky, she would change colors, so Cardamon would give the rest to his mother. In this original series, she would begin to cry tears with what looked to me like jellyfish coming out with them, but not waking up like Cardamon had hoped. In the Netflix version of the show, Cardamon's mother instead begins to cry strange blobs that contain images inside of them relevant to the show. In the episode, Now I'm Really Alone, Muli explains that in order for a wish crystal to work, you have to eat a big enough chunk of it, something he is so well versed in he can tell when a chunk is missing a piece, even when it's shattered into several pieces already. He explains that without a full piece, wishes only become partially true or just don't come true at all, just getting weird, as he says. This episode, being the second to the last in the Netflix series, was originally written as a follow-up to the YouTube series, before its story was rebooted into the first three episodes of the Netflix series. As such, Mooley's explanation here seems to apply to both the original series and the Netflix series, and explains what happened to Cardamon's mother in both. In the original series, she seems to cry out these little jellyfish, something not so random after Cardamon's dream earlier in the episode, where he remembers the story his mother told him about where jellyfish came from. In this story, a princess with big beautiful hair like his mother is lost at sea, and can only return home thanks to a giant octopus, who mistakes her long hair for a lady octopus in the water. They enjoy each other's company while he returns her home, and as a parting gift, she gives him some of her torn up hair. When the hair becomes unbundled in the water, the giant octopus reaches for all the pieces and accidentally tears himself apart. It's almost a sad ending, but at the last moment, the pieces of the octopus touch the strands of the princess's hair and each turn to a beautiful jellyfish. This story to me seemed to be a fairy tale that Cardamon's mother made up to explain where Cardamon himself came from and why his father is mysteriously absent. To me, Cardamon's hair always resembled a cartoon jellyfish, leading me to think that this was something of a nickname Cardamon's mother had for him. His father was perhaps a sailor who died at sea, after returning Cardamon's mother to her island. When she ate her donut, the wish she would have made was to see her little jellyfish again, and with the wish crystal not being complete, it would have caused her to cry out little jellyfish instead of causing her to wake up, making the jellyfish form right in front of her eyes. In the original story, I think this would have led to Cardamon slowly figuring out the riddle that he is the jellyfish in his mother's story, and not just understand what happened to his father through it, but realize that his mother really did wish to see him again. In the Netflix series, Cardamon's mother cries after eating her part of the donut, but instead of jellyfish, strange blobs come out, each containing images such as the spaceship when she first starts, and later Puppy Cat and even Muli. In this Netflix series, we know that the machines aren't keeping Cardamon's comatose mother alive, but are actually what put her in a coma, and that Cardamon was meant to be asleep alongside her as well. These machines have hooked Cardamon's mother up to the ship, and while we don't know exactly why, it seems important to fixing the ship and making it fully operational, something she does while asleep. Here, I think it is safe to say she wished that the ship was done so she could be with Cardamon again, but because the wish crystal was incomplete, she just cries out images of what she is wishing for until they come true. In the end, she gets what she really wanted out of all these images, which was to be with Cardamon again, and she gives out what will hopefully be her last tear, since it has finally come true. When the Wish Crystals are introduced in Episode 3 of the Netflix series, we can see shooting stars slowly flying by in the background, hinting at the possibility that these crystals came from shooting stars, the kind people would make wishes on. In addition to Cardamon's mother, the Wish Crystals seem to have affected many other characters, some directly and some perhaps indirectly. 
When Deckard gets injured in the third episode of the Netflix series, he returns home with a piece of the Wish Crystal lodged in his skull. He pulls it out, and as he does, there's a sparkling moment where he seems to get a wish granted. Since the characters don't have to say their wishes out loud, it can be hard to say what he wished for, and how it may have only become partially true with him not having too much of the crystal. I imagine he wished that he was a cook, a baker, or what have you, and finally the crystal gave him the power to go to cooking school, but it didn't actually make him good at baking. The crystal would be found by Cass and repurposed to a gift for a Howl. B would accidentally break it trying to help Cass, and end up breaking up her own shard into even smaller pieces to decorate her umbrella. When Wooly examines it, he indicates it could grant a wish, but is missing one small chunk of it that would really work. This small chunk is, at least in part, what was given to Howl as a gift and later repurposed by his brother as a fishing lure. It would then be swallowed by a fish, granting her wish to become human for a day, but eventually she would puke it up back in the water, causing her human form to disappear. Without that piece, any wish made with these crystals would be incomplete. When B gets ripped open in the finale, the little pieces of her climb out and lick the wish crystals that are on Muli's hand. They seem to make the united wish of wanting to become B, but with a piece of the crystal missing, the wish comes out weird. Each piece becomes her own little version of B, retaining the aspects of themselves that influenced B, such as one piece that had feelings for Crispin when the other parts of B did not. I believe it is possible that these different versions of B will all go on to be their own people, each getting to be themselves without the influence of the others. I believe this pink one will go on to have a relationship with Crispin, not held back by the others who did not like him. Likewise, Crispin is immediately able to see the bee that did like him and recognize specific traits in her that he liked from the original bee. I imagine each piece of bee will go on to have their own life, some with their own romances, such as one of these pieces of bee going on to have a relationship with Deckard. Additionally, I think the hollowed out shell of robot bee may continue to develop its own sentience and perhaps end up with Mooley. Mooley was also left as an empty shell at the end of Volume 1, but the way B was placed on top of him seemed to foreshadow that he too would begin to redevelop his consciousness. He was very clearly crushing on B, and it would be interesting to see their relationship develop as they regain their consciousness together. This would explain why B had so many love interests in the show, particularly two from the same family, as it was always meant to explore B dividing herself at some point, and those parts of her getting a chance to be who they are independently. That being said, this doesn't mean the show will end with all of them in their own relationships with a happily ever after. Instead, I imagine that a new wish crystal will emerge at some point, giving the Bee girls a chance to finally unify again, becoming the cohesive version of Bee that they were always meant to become from the beginning. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.